Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I will be answering one question which is often asked to me. This is asked by students who are scoring around say 50 to 60 percentile in CAT and they ask me what they should do to increase their percentile from 50 to 60 to say 90 to 95. So before you actually make your strategy, you should figure out uh, say 50 to 60 percentile would be somebody who is scoring between say 15 to 20 marks in CAT and 90 percentile would be approximately 50 marks in CAT. 95 would be 60 and if you really want to do well 99 would be around say 80 marks now increasing your score from say 50 to 20 to 50 marks would require some strategy a lot of hard work and taking a lot of mocks if you are looking to score say 50 marks one of the things that you should do is roughly you'll have to figure out how much you want to score in each one of the three sections in quant verbal and ldf increasing your score increasing your percentile uh, the lowest hanging fruit or the first thing the most efficient thing to do is trying to improve your score a lot in one particular section. For engineers, in most of the cases, this will be quant. So if you're looking to score say 50 marks, if you score around 10 to 15 marks in verbal, 10 to 15 marks in LRDA, and say 20 to 25 marks in quant, your score would be very close to 50 marks. That will ensure that you're scoring 90 percentile. Now, immediately based on how much you're scoring now, if you're scoring a total of 15 marks, trying to score 20 to 25 marks in quant alone would seem very overwhelming. But one of the things that you should remember is that uh, you should not panic. Uh, increasing your score and trying to score 20 marks or 25 marks in quant is definitely possible. You should first know what are the important topics in quant. What are the important topics in quant? There are three topics which are very, very important. One is arithmetic, which involves uh, topics like say ratio and proportion, time, speed and distance, simple and compound interest. That is a very important topic. Second topic, which is very important is algebra. Algebra would involve questions like say linear equations, quadratic equations and so on. The third most important topic is geometry. Geometry has two parts. One is solids and the other is 2D geometry. 2D geometry would be something like say circles, triangles, polygons and uh, solids would involve uh, questions which involve the volume, total surface area, lateral surface area, those kind of things. If you are good at these three topics, arithmetic, algebra and geometry, out of 22 questions in quant, it is quite certain that you will be getting at least 12 to 14 questions just from these three topics. And if you work a lot and if you practice all of them, uh, you should definitely be scoring around say 8 to 9 questions correct in them. I am not asking you to score all 22 questions correct. If you put in your effort in a very systematic way, in a very focused way and uh, become pretty good at these three topics, definitely there is a very good chance you will be getting at least 8 questions correct because the number of questions that will come from these three topics would be around say 14. And even in the remaining 8 uh, questions which will not come from these topics, you will be getting at least one or two simple questions. There might be a simple question which involves uh, say number system. There might be some other simple question which involves say, say logarithms. Now essentially if you focus on these three topics, there is a good chance you will get say 8 to 9 questions correct which will ensure that you are scoring 20 to 25 marks in quant. Now coming to LRDA, many people feel uh, that they are not at all good at LRDA. Many people tell me that they are petrified when LRDA starts and how uh, they can actually score 10 to 15 marks. Now 10 to 15 marks would imply that you have to get one set correct. And if you look at the LRDA papers of the last three years, you would notice that uh, there is at least one set which involves data interpretation in all the slots across the last three years. Data interpretation doesn't involve a lot of logic. Data interpretation is basically a graph and you should know how to read that graph. Now, if you don't know how to read the graph, we have a lot of uh, videos in our premium course which will help you in your data interpretation. Even if you want to search on YouTube, you can just search for Kraku data interpretation and we have done a lot of free streams which will help you in understanding how to read a graph. Graphs will be say pie charts, there will be say bar charts or line charts, but all of them are very easy once you understand how to actually read a graph. And once you know that, what I would recommend you to do is download the CAT previous papers. Of CAT 2022, there are three slots. CAT 2021, there are three slots. And CAT 2020, I think there are two or three slots. Download all of them and from that PDF, go to the LRDI section and in the LRDI section, try to go to the data interpretation uh, set and try to answer that set on your own you would realize once you put in effort that it is not very difficult. And once you gain that confidence that if there is a data interpretation set, I will definitely get correct. You will realize that psychological also you will feel that okay, scoring 12 marks in LRDA is not very difficult. 12 marks is just getting one set. And in addition to it, if you are strategic, you will definitely get some of the theta questions correct. I'm not asking you to even solve uh, anything else. Even uh, guessing strategically on some of the theta questions, you will get one or two of them correct. In addition to it, other than uh, these graphs, I would also recommend you to solve a lot of arrangement set because arrangements are very easy. If you know how to answer an arrangement set, which is basically an Einstein puzzle kind of a set, there is a good chance you might actually get two sets correct. And the way to look at LRDA is that uh, you have 40 minutes and 
you should not focus on doing all the four sets. You should not uh, tell yourself that I have to solve one set every 10 minutes. When you enter the examination also, if you are focusing or if you are targeting 90 percent time, you should tell yourself that I have to get two sets correct. And if you are getting two sets out of in 40 minutes, you have 20 minutes to get one set correct. 20 minutes is sufficient time for you to get any set correct. The key to doing well in LRDI is identifying what are the easy sets and what are the difficult sets. You should not waste your time in trying to crack a difficult set. So that experience of trying to identify the easy sets, you will only get with a lot of practice. And again, the practice, in my opinion, should start from the CAT previous papers. Cracku, like I mentioned earlier, has all the previous papers of CAT. All of them are for free in PDF format. And in fact, in our previous papers, if you click on, uh, if you go to that question, you see the uh, solution, the text solution in the PDF. If you don't understand it, below the text solution, there is a button for video solution. If you click on it, a new tab will open in your browser where you will get the video solution for that particular question. This is a very useful feature and our PDFs are also downloaded by thousands of students. So definitely do download the CAT previous years papers and try to solve at least the data interpretation sets from all of those slots. Now coming to verbal. How can you actually get uh, say 10 to 15 marks in verbal? You should again remember that getting 10 to 15 marks is not very difficult in verbal. If you tell yourself that my target is getting 10 to 15 marks, you should essentially attempt two RCs with good accuracy. What exactly is good accuracy? A RC has four questions, you have to get three questions correct. If you are getting three questions correct, you are getting plus nine marks. And if you are getting one question wrong, you are getting minus one. So a very good RC where you get three questions correct out of four, you are actually scoring eight marks. And the second RC, even if you don't do very well, even if you get two questions correct and two questions wrong, that also will ensure that you are getting, I think, around four to five marks. Two into, yeah, you are getting four marks in that. That will ensure that you are scoring 12. You will definitely get some more marks in the verbal section, which involves uh, para jumbles, para completions, uh, where uh, that sentence will come. So getting 10 to 15 would uh, marks in verbal would imply that you have to do two RCs correct. In addition to it, especially in verbal section, I would tell you that uh, one of the questions that is often asked to me by students is that uh, they have been able to eliminate options. They have been able to eliminate two options which they know are not correct. But amongst the remaining two, they are getting stuck and many times they are actually marking the wrong option. This they tell me is their big fault. Now what I tell them is that this is just psychological. The reason for that is if you look at it purely from a mathematical standpoint. Suppose you don't know anything about uh, one particular question. You have four options and you are not able to eliminate any one of them. And you, you choose one question at random, one option at random. What is the expected marks that you score from it? The probability that you will get it correct is one fourth. The probability that you will get it wrong is three fourth. When you get it correct, you will get plus three. When you get it wrong, you get minus one. So the expected marks is basically three into one by four minus three by four into one, which is basically zero. So without eliminating any option, if you randomly mark, you will get no marks, you will lose no marks. Now, if you are able to eliminate one option, so now you know that out of the four options, one option is definitely wrong. You have been able to figure it out. And amongst the remaining three options, you are completely clueless. You know that one of the three options is correct. Now, what is the expected probability? Now, out of those three options, the probability that you are getting it correct is one third. The probability that you are getting it wrong is two third. So the expected marks that you get will be three into one by three minus one into two by three, which is one third. So you are actually making one third marks, uh, that is 3 into 1 by 3 is 1 minus 2 by 3, yeah, that is 1. So you are actually making one third of mark, the expected uh, probability, just by eliminating one option. If you are able to eliminate two options, the probability that you will get it correct is half, the probability that you will get it wrong is half. So now the expected probability will be 3 into 1 by 2 minus 1 into 1 by 2, which is basically one mark. So if you are able to eliminate two options, the expected marks that you get from it, just by randomly marking one of the two options is one mark. Believe in this maths. Don't believe in uh, your own uh, panic uh, paranoia. Folk, uh, believe that if you are able to eliminate one option also, your expected marks from that question is positive. Use this also to uh, ensure that your uh, attempts rates are high. This is important because in verbal, many times when you are looking at the four options, you will be able to eliminate one or two options. Because one or two options look really wrong based on whatever information has been given in the passage, that it is easy to eliminate one or two options in verbal. If you are able to eliminate one or two options, definitely go for it and definitely mark. Don't overthink. Just uh, if you are able to eliminate one or two options, go for it and mark uh, one of the options remaining. This is basically what you should do. Let me answer some uh, questions that people ask from this particular topic. What does the 50 percentile and 90 percentile mean? 50 percentile would mean that you are scoring around 50 to 20 marks. 90 percentile would mean that you are scoring 50 marks approximately. 95 would mean that you are scoring approximately 60 marks. And 99 percentile would be that you are scoring around 80 to 85 marks. Assessing your current performance, how to identify areas of weakness and strength. You will identify your areas of strength and weakness by taking mocks. 
assume that uh, mocks you are taking just to understand and plan your future uh, study plan better. You should know what your areas of strength are, what your areas of weakness are and you will know this only when you are actually taking mocks. Imagine that you are going uh, from say Delhi to Prayagraj. If you just know roughly the direction, you are not following any Google Maps, you are not asking anybody, you just sit in your car and you are driving, the probability that you will actually reach your destination on time is less. But suppose you are uh, asking somebody after every one hour that are you going in the right direction, then it will definitely help you much better in reaching your destination on time. Suppose you are taking Google Maps and you are following it, then you are definitely reaching the destination on time. This is how you should look at mocks. Mocks are there to ensure that your study plan is correct. You are not wasting your time on uh, studying topics which are not important. You are focusing on your areas of weakness. You are not uh, spending too much time on your areas of strength. All of these things you will know and you will be able to plan better only if you are taking mocks regularly. Setting realistic uh, goals. How to create a roadmap for achieving significant improvement. You can create a roadmap for achieving significant improvement by starting doing something. What you have to believe is that from 15, uh, if you are scoring around say 15 marks, you are not going to increase it to say 50 in a week. But from 15, you can increase it to 20 in a week. From 20, you can increase it to 25 in two weeks and so on. You have to believe in the process. And one of the important things that you should uh, believe in is that if you, whatever effort you are putting in now, the fruit of it will be shown two weeks from now. If you are putting in a lot of effort now, the results will not be immediately visible tomorrow. Suppose you want to lose weight and you are going to a gym. By working hard in a gym on a single day, you won't see any benefit. But if you go to the gym every day for two weeks, uh, after two weeks, on the 15th day, you will realize that you are actually losing a little bit of weight. You will realize that and then you will feel more motivated. So the important thing to remember is that for two weeks, just believe in the process and from the 15th day, the results will become apparent that you will be motivated on your own. Leveraging available resources, how to make the most of online platforms, books, mentors and other learning tools. So, I will tell you what are the uh, things that Kraku is giving for free. Kraku is providing all the previous papers with detailed text as well as video solutions on our website completely for free. I don't think anybody else is providing such an efficient tool for you to actually prepare well. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to improve in data interpretation, if you want to score 10 to 15 marks, you have to focus on the previous papers, at least on the data interpretation set. So download all the previous papers and uh, try to attempt them as often as you can. Second, try to take mocks. Krakow has one free mock and it also has uh, 20 paid mocks. It has uh, 15 mocks in Dashcat and Pi Headstart mocks along with a number of sectionals. All of them are uh, very, very good. All of them are in the latest pattern of the examination, which I would recommend you to actually take. They are taken by thousands of students. Similarly, Krakow daily targets uh, are also every single day you will be getting one test in Quant, one test in Verbal, one test in LRDI. All of them with uh, detailed video solutions. They are taken by thousands of students and they are very, very beneficial. So use all of these resources to ensure that you prepare well and make the best use of the remaining four months. All the best. I hope you do well. If you have any doubts with respect to your preparation, please uh, feel free to comment below this video. I will look at all the comments and I will try to help you to the best of my ability.